What do you think of Tesla coming to India? I'm a big Elon Musk fanboy. Are EVs really sustainable? Bangalore, for example, 50% of electricity is from renewable. The Chinese electric scooter was replacing cycle. Someone does not have a lot of money and they want to build a scooter. What will you tell them? An EV scooter? But oh, it's, it's still very hard. Yeah, but even if, let's say, I want to start a factory, mm. it's not that expensive. Paying for enough design hours, engineering hours, that's expensive. Why IC is higher or lower maintenance versus electric? Every OEM suddenly said, oh, mujhe bhi electric karna. But the one problem we thought we could solve for mm. is solve for the energy problem. But you ended up building a fast charging solution. Best way to solve for this is rapid charging. The charging station businesses mm. is just getting get more profitable. Today, we charge you 14 to 16 rupees a unit. Mm. Where is industry moving to? India was this huge two-wheeler market. Nothing inspired from China. No one wanted to design in India. You left Ether. Why did you leave? And everyone just running around to find technology in India. You can't import technology for mm. India. looking like Elon Musk today. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so Arun Vinayak, <laughs> the exponent guy is here and today is the hot EV chat, right, that we're going to have on Kashte Akash. Thank you Arun, first of all, traveling all the way from Bangalore to the Gurgaon land, which is the startup wars, which all happening. We'll talk about that also. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, ek baat dao, Arun, so why have you picked, you wanted to build a business, right? And you wanted to do something in electric, why electric? Well, firstly, thanks for having me here and uh, not sure looking like Elon Musk is what we're all <laughs> trying to do. <laughs> Maybe other things we're trying to emulate, but uh, no, good to be here. Um, sure. um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think we always loved vehicles, mobility, since okay. I was young. Uh, built my first car when I was 16. Um, it was a second-hand go-kart, uh, sort of a scrappy car that we put together. And since then, it's just been about chasing the next big thing in mobility. Yeah. And I think we're just lucky that... We are in this space and time when there's this tectonic shift in mobility, mm. right? Last 20, 30 years, mobility has gone incremental. This last 10 years, mobility has gone mm. disruptive, right? Like, yeah. And elect like this electrification is once in a lifetime opportunity mm. and it's just like, had to be part of it. So we started Aether, that was on the vehicle side, now Exponent, which is on the energy side. So mm. yeah, was, I guess can't ask for more. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, I think you guys also started Aether, you were part of the... I was a founding partner. Yeah. You're the founding yeah, partner of Ether. Tarun, obviously, huge respect for what he's built. Uh, and Ether is one of the, still one of the most respectable scooters on electric side which are built. So, and you were out of your college out of that? Yeah, that, that was right out of college. Uh, IIT Madras? Yeah, IIT Madras, yeah. yeah. So, so, how did that happen? How did you join the Ether team? And what were you doing? You were the CPO, right? Chief Product Officer. And everything is about an electric scooter as a product. So, tell us about, you know, the early days. Yeah, this is 2013. Starting an EV company was considered moronic. Right? <laughs> I say the same on 2017. Yeah. So I can imagine you guys were pardadas. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. we were talking about building a product from scratch in India. Yeah. So it was quite, uh, I think the vision was very, was crazy. Huh. And the vision was ahead of its time. And uh, But it's it's interest, interesting that we sort of got it across the line. Most things ahead of the time yeah. have this risk factor of survival. But yeah. I think uh, we just chugged along and... The concept was uh, clear. I mean, I think India was this huge two-wheeler market. Yeah. Uh, EV back then was this ugly Chinese two-wheeler, mm. right? Like, uh, very slow. Still is in a lot of ways. Still is in a lot of ways. <laughs> uh, yeah. it, was, it was almost the EV scooter meant, oh, it's a slow vehicle for the old guy to go buy groceries yeah. next street. It wasn't, it was never the, oh, this will be my only product. Correct. It, this will be my main product. I'll yeah. go to work on this, yeah. right? So we wanted to change that. We thought... Yeah. We thought the tech was loosely there, where EVs could be faster, could be sexier, could be mm -hmm. better. Uh, and we focused on those aspects. Uh, we thought cheaper was still not around the corner mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think now it's it's better and well, cheaper. So Yeah, actually. But tell me one thing, this entire wave of electrification, why is it important? I mean, gas is running, people have built industries on automobile mm. and we are talking about a shift towards electrification mm. what are the reasons why it is important according to firstly let's start from the consumer side right i so, just think it's a better product forget it, it being green why is it better i mean just think of it like you have zero vibrations you get talk instantaneously mm. you have such good throttle modulation mm. the weight distribution of the products in two-wheeler three-wheeler uh, mm. car whatever it is mm. and ev just fundamentally drives better mm. and, and if you look at it um, like Aether in a scooter category beats out like 150-200cc bikes. Mm. Right? Mm. Tesla beats out pretty much every competition mm. out there. 
So, we are, I think we're at a place where, I mean, if you just look at ICE, it's a very messy process. You literally have a thousand moving parts. Mm. Uh, you, you're controlling combustion and explosion. Mm. Con- try to control it as much as possible. You're mm. dealing all the vibrations. Mm. You have this clutch, you have transmissions, yeah. you have all of that. It's cool, but it's messy. Mm-hmm. Um, I love it. As an engineering engineer, I love it. Yeah. But if you just want the next level of simple, clean performance, it's more... Mm. Less is more, right? Um, yeah. And I think with EVs, just the simplicity of engineering and the architecture just allows engineers to build products at a next level. The aesthetics have improved, mm. the performance has improved, the vibrations have improved. It's just a better product. Mm. Then there's, of, of course, the Indian s- sustainability point of view, yeah. both from an economic and environmental. You know, environmental is more world, of course. Mm. Uh, but just like the amount of oil imports we have, mm. uh, if India has to go um, energy resilient, yeah. EV is the only way to yeah. make it happen. And from a global point of view, obviously, energy is mm-hmm. just carbon footprint. We've mm-hmm. got to solve for that. Uh, uh, in India, for example, commercial vehicles, 10% vehicles, 70% energy consumed on road. So that's a segment that needs to go electric ASAP. Sure. It's just, just petrol and diesel guzzling sort of monsters mm-hmm. that just need to go electric ASAP. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one is, you said, uh, a better product, which is a very different lens to look at it. I don't think still consumers realize that EV could be better Mm. in terms of an experience, Mm. right? Uh, People talk about costs Mm. and you've not talked about costs at all, Mm. yeah? Is cost also a reason that it's cheaper? And if it is, then how much and how? And this might be a little counterintuitive, right? Uh, So I think cost matters, just in a country like India. Mm. Uh, But I don't think, I think cost-based solutions make incremental impact. Mm. So you get 10-20% market mm. changes. Magic changes the world. Yeah. Right? We didn't move from the Nokia 1100s to smartphones because it was less expensive. Mm. It suddenly allowed you to do 10 new things yeah. that your feature phones didn't let you do. That's true. Ironically, over time, mm. smartphones are now cheaper mm. than probably feature phones in multiple ways. Yeah. Right, yeah. uh, so I think we will see the same same trend with EVs. Yeah. So today we talk about TCO, which is so EV is more expensive. Yeah. But over time you, rec- you recuperate it. Right. Maybe there's a point in time where EVs will cost as much as a diesel vehicle to buy up front, and we're mm. not far away from that. Yeah. So I think cost is a. As cost becomes better, you'll see more adoption. You'll have new segments open up. Right. I think the adoption curve, the funnel, just becomes wider and wider. Yeah. But I don't think that's ever the the reason that people flip. Mm. People flip for something that's magical, something that's a brand new experience. And yeah. EVs just allows, I mean, just for what you do, right? I mean, mm. with with deliveries and logistics. Yeah. It's, sure, it's EV and it's cheaper, okay. Okay. but it's fundamentally changed the way you can track digitalization. Yeah. It's all data. It's all data driven. Correct. Right? With ICE, yeah. uh, data was sprinkled on top. Mm. It was an afterthought. Mm. That's not true with EVs. EVs, yeah. data is like at the True. fundamental so that's one thing that you've taken away from Correct. EVs Correct. there are people who take away the performance and peak torque mm-hmm. and the sex appeal of EVs so mm-hmm. EVs as a platform just allows you to do it's, it's like a toolkit it's like a Lego kit it lets you just build brand new things mm-hmm. that uh, commercial vehicles didn't and and of course environmental impact and mm-hmm. cost mm-hmm. Is, is, is a part of it the environment bit is important mm-hmm. um, but I don't think and, and my point of view is you can't sell that to the consumer Sure. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the last thing that at least the no Indian consumer it, yeah. has in the mind. Yeah. Environment, right? Well, we talk about it a lot. Mm-hmm. But tell me, let's let's uh, double click on environment also for a bit, right? Are EVs really sustainable? Because a lot of theories are that, hey, still you're charging via electricity, which is coming via coal. What's your thesis on it? Just for the audience, I want to just get this clear. Hair sustainable or not? Oh, it's 100% sustainable. Sure. Uh, so I think, in the, I think there's a lot of lobby against EVs, right? Yeah. Like suddenly, when it comes to EVs, you'll do the longest pipeline math. Yeah. Yeah. But with, with, with IC, you'll just like do the shortest <laughs> pipeline math. Or, or this is a long tailpipe is what Correct. they call it, right? I think it's a, it's a ridiculous concept. Um, so firstly, even if let's say you, your energy is fully from coal, mm. um, you're, the way you're able to manage emissions at a centralized coal mm. production mm. versus let's say 20,000 or, 20, or 200 million now, I think 200 million two wheelers, right yeah. out there. Uh, uh, two million in delivery, and the rest. Yeah, yeah. Right. We, we sell about uh, what a million and a half, right? Uh, every year. Two wheelers. Yeah, yeah, two wheelers. Twenty million. Yeah. 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 Correct. Yeah. So, that's a lot of. Uh, 
the small engines all over the place. I mean, who does emission yeah. checks? How do you like manage all of this? How do you ensure right. people are actually doing it? So a pure emission point of view, it's much easier mm-hmm. uh, for you to centralize energy production, mm-hmm. even if you're running on coal. Mm-hmm. Second, even if I assume today's grid, grid efficiency is, mm-hmm. yada yada, mm-hmm. the total amount of carbon footprint is still lower mm-hmm. if you're 100% on coal. Mm. Right now, there are two three things that are changing. Mm-hmm. Firstly, it's not coal anymore. Mm. The rate at which India is going renewable That's is so. aggressive. And in in Bangalore, for example, fifty percent of electricity is from renewable. Fifty percent from hydro, a large large part of that wow. right? already. Wow. Right. So, bam, the math already changed. Mm. Second, the grid is improving at a rapid rate, which means the efficiency of grid. Efficiency. How we're doing that uh, is improved. But honestly, if you just go renewable, mm. grid efficiency doesn't matter because yeah. energy is free. Right? Correct. Um, so yeah, so you're seeing that rapidly change. So I, I, we look at energy generation, distribution, storage and application as, as four different mm-hmm. problems, four different entities. Like the energy generation, but it's more like governments and large companies like Reliance are so, solving that. So. And then we have startups and innovators on the end, yeah. building applications. Yeah. Uh, they all have to improve in parallel. Yeah. You can't just point at, oh, we use coal yeah. and then not fix the yeah. other bit. But, but the bottom line, even if we continue to use coal forever, yeah. it's still better to work it. No, that's, that's a great insight for everyone. But I think now, before I get to Exponent, which is what I'm excited about, mm. I would love to know that the early days of Aether, what was going in the team's head, that what all things that you wanted to create on your own, and I'm sure you must also getting a lot of inspiration from China, like mm. every other OEM, right? Mm-hmm. So what was the product building exercise? How did you break it out? What mm. did you make in-house? What did you outsource? And how that has evolved at Aether, if you can share that, you know, because anyone who's wanting to build a new company and there's a product which is widely available outside mm. of India, mm. they'll try to bring in, the shortcut is bring in, assemble and sell, which is mm. what the mobile companies also did in India, mm. right? A lot of indigenization didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So what was the process? And even if it was first things, everything from China, please say that. Yeah. So that we know that how that evolution happened. No, interesting point. So actually, it was nothing inspired from China. Not because we were against China or anything sure. like that. Uh, I think uh, the problem is enough companies don't think consumer first India. Mm. right? And I think that's starting to change now. That's great. Mm. right? And this was around 2011, 2012 that we were thinking through mm. Aetherm. And we realized... Uh, the Chinese electric scooter is different from the Indian electric scooter because it's targeting different consumers. Mm-hmm. The Chinese electric scooter was replacing cycles. Yeah, it's a small one. Small it's ones. Good. And so it's either you're walking or cycling to a factory or you use the electric scooter. So the yes. performance level, even the life expectation, if it lasted a year, people were, oh, okay. Okay, yeah. And then you came to India, which is super value conscious. There's no cycle market to replace. Yeah. There, was this, no there was a hardcore petrol two-wheeler. And the, the Honda Activa mm-hmm. is a damn good bike, yeah. right? So if you want to beat the Honda Activa, mm-hmm. You need to build an angular electric vehicle, yeah, which means every nut and bolt that goes into it, every assumption, everything that you built into it was brand new. So there was nowhere to draw inspiration. Ironically, as we were building it out, we had Gogoro also mm-hmm. launch, and they were the closest in Taiwan. In Taiwan, oh, yeah. Okay. And they were actually the closest competition with respect to specifications or even thought process, saying, "Hey, let's build a great high performance electric scooter." And I, I think that that was one point of inspiration, uh, but. There was like everything from brake systems to chassis to battery to thermals to motor architecture yeah. to transmission. For example, most scooters use something called a hub motor. Yeah. We couldn't use that because yeah. it's, it doesn't deliver the sort of power you need to compete yeah. with the Honda Activa. So yeah. we had to use a frame motor. There were no frame motor manufacturers around the world. Okay. So we had to develop from scratch. There was no transmission for electric two wheelers. It was not a BLDC hub motor no. that you guys put? Oh, wow. It was a frame mounted uh, PMSM motor. Yeah. Wow. And that, that's first of a kind or that was existing somewhere? Like Gogoro maybe had it or something? Gogoro also had it, yeah. Google. Yeah, so anyone who thought consumer first yeah. and thought, hey, I must deliver a great product no matter what. Yeah. And actually sat down and you thought about it. There was no supply chain. There were no vendors. There was no mm. ecosystem for high performance two-wheelers back then. So you sort of had to build everything from scratch. Wow. And, you know, so starting 20... 20- 14, right? And then when did the first scooter came about? I think uh, screwing out the idea from 2013, 2014 till 2018 was the first launch with wow. consumers. Five years. I don't think we were always six months away from launch in that, <laughs> in that, in that five it's years. Coming, it's six coming. months we are launching, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, oh, but yeah. 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 And, and so, so did you end up building everything in-house? And you were also like a young guy coming yeah. out of a college. Mm-hmm. Heading product for mm. this company, mm. 
right? So how big was the team and who was doing what? Yeah, we had a product team, we had an engineering team, yeah. and then we had sourcing and ops. Right. Uh, we didn't how have big, a supply. Did you have a headcount? Maybe 2014, 15 when you guys started? 2014, 15 were fairly small, I think, like sub hundred people. Uh, we're just still just engineers back. Then. And were, were you the most senior, or you had seniors also? No, no, we always hired. Uh, a mix of both. We realized yeah. that was another thing. We realized we couldn't hire engineers uh-huh. from the industry because India had never built zero to one products. Yeah. Like an an average automotive engineer from the industry yeah. had in, in, like someone some Japanese guy gave him a chassis and he like he improved it ten okay. percent year on year. Yeah. Right. When you ask someone to hey build a chassis from scratch, they weren't wow. people. Uh, or build like this brand new concept from scratch. Okay. Right? So uh, yeah, in, India has always built soaps or satellites. Right? So. <laughs> Right, we've done high tech, low volume or low tech, high volume. Yeah. We've never done high tech, high volume. And EV was like the first. I like it. First time we had to think high tech, high volume. Even cell phones, we're still manufacturing today. Yeah. Right? We're not actually designing from scratch. Yeah. Cell phones today, and cell phones are easier to inherit mm. architectures from abroad. Mm. The the consumer differences are slightly far lesser. Yeah. Suddenly we're talking EV. Right. Grid condition is different. Road condition is different. Right. Temperature condition is different. Price points are different. Right. So the problem statement is different. So. Wow. So you knew uh, Tarun from um, you know your IIT days or how did yeah how did that I actually knew Swapnil more Swapnil and I were part of projects he was the CTO and co-founder at huh. IIT and uh, both of us were just screwing around with projects same batch or no then he was actually your 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 senior wow yeah he passed out a year ahead of me and yeah. and then you just joined them straight over. Yeah, we would, uh, like Swapnil and I were part of these projects where we would build cars and we would take them to this, this is called the Formula Student Project. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we used to build these cars and they take them to like Germany and UK and try to race them. Mm-hmm. And the, we, would get th- we would get thrashed. Okay. Like we were rubbish. Right? <laughs> and versus the Germans. B- versus yeah. the Germans. And I think that was a big slap on the face because we, we walked around with a chip on the shoulder say, I'm IIT Madras, yeah, wow. like a premium <laughs> college. And we used to get thrashed by tire two, tire three really? colleges from Germany. And that's what we oh. Within India also? No, no. Uh, oh, there, there, yeah. there. That can't happen. <laughs> yeah, and then we're like, man, in, like we don't know how to build. Yeah. And there was like this big learning shit. Everyone was just building software. Everyone was just building services. Yeah. Uh, no one was, no one wanted to design in India. B- back the make in India was a big deal, but no one was saying, hey, let's design in India. And, and, and just again, uh, going back to building a scooter. So I've heard there's a clay modeling, then there's, you know, the entire testing bit, and then you'll, you guys designed your own batteries also and that's how you know your next avatar came about so tell us about you know if someone wants to build a scooter what's the best process you know to 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 design that an electric scooter of sorts yeah. I, I think the, i think the path and answer depends on what you're going after mm-hmm. we went after a super premium experience zero compromise yeah. it comes with with the advantage of the final experience and product mm. and quality that everyone talks about today, yeah. but also comes with the downside of extra effort, extra team size, and a lot more things you have to do in house. Sure. Uh, so I think it's a decision you have to make. Yeah. Uh, it's not necessarily the only way to build a product. Right. right. If you want to go after a lower cost, quicker way to, yeah. quicker GTM, maybe uh, more on efficiency, but uh-huh. maybe not as much as features, yeah. you could probably partner up. Um, and I think that's a transition that will happen. I think not every company will Correct. have the capability to build everything in house. Yes. Aether, Ola, some of these guys have had had the good fortune of raising capital right. and hence being able to invest. Mm. Uh, so that's not the only way to build a company. Mm. But let's say if does if someone does not have a lot of money mm. and they want to build a scooter, mm. right? Uh, what would you tell them? An EV scooter, but they should build it in India. They mm. should not get a China import. Mm. Uh, and let's say now, like Ola raised their first round at two fifty mil or something mm. like that. Maybe this guy is able to still raise a ten mil round, mm. right? Would he be able to build a scooter, uh, which is massy, right? I don't want a jazzy scooter with all those panels and stuff. But oh, it's it's still very hard. It's tough. You you probably just about get across building a vehicle, but you'll run out of money to distribute. Really? Right. One of the biggest cost. Most people think manufacturing is the most expensive bit. Mm. In, in, in an OEM, it's actually not, it's actually the lowest cost is manufacturing. Mm, that's where the supply chain comes about and then economies of scale happen, right? Yeah, but even if let's say I want to start a factory, mm. it's not that expensive. Mm, correct. Right, right? Actually, the designing, like paying for enough design hours, engineering hours, that's expensive. Really? Is, yeah. it, is it that expensive? Because see, it is. I see engine industry exists. Mm. So, I need, to, I mean, there are a lot of people who would be making chassis, right, mm. for the scooter. 
plastics also would be existent, right? Mm. There are many guys who are building plastics for an Activa or other hero, right? Mm. Now, what else, right? You're talking about a motor and a battery. Just, mm. just maybe now since let's since we're talking about IC versus electric, how many parts in an IC vehicle and mm. how many a scooter? Let's focus on, and because we are both you know smaller vehicles, how many in an electric scooter, and what are the key parts? What why IC is higher or lower maintenance versus electric? Subsection wise is the same number of subsection like chassis, bodywork, suspension, mm. wheels, tires, mm. powertrain, transmission is the same thing. Yeah. Obviously the big difference is in powertrain mm. where you have a battery motor, transmission yeah. combo. Yeah. As against IC. But but what fundamentally changes is once you go from an engine which is very quiet, uh, sorry, very very loud, yeah. uh, with a lot of heat. Uh, but at the same time, it's not as thermally sensitive. Like an so, engine can be at 110 degrees Celsius, yeah. so it's fine. Correct. Right? But now you have a battery, which is like this quiet fellow, yeah. right? Uh, doing nothing, but it's very sensitive, yeah. right? Uh, can't go beyond 30, 40, 40 degrees Celsius, ideally. Right. Um, so fundamentally, how you think through the chassis design, yeah. the vol volumetric densities are different, yeah. right? So uh, like an engine and how much space it takes with the battery, how much space it takes, the weight, yeah. the suspension, so, everything. so once you get into it, and again, this is the point of how much compromise do you want to take? Mm. You don't have to build a perfect product. Mm. You can take small compromises, mm. uh, but you'll still fundamentally see yourself having to redesign a few elements. Mm -hmm. And let's say, even if you skip all of that, sure. you could still sort of put together a basic product yeah. in a few million dollars, yeah. get across production line yeah. and then the the biggest cost in the OEM space is distribution like you'll got to yeah. distribute these Correct. vehicles there i think sure the brand agnostic distribution ships coming up True. Lot uh, of them. yeah yeah so so maybe you could use a lot of those channels so i do i do think there'll be a lot of low cost solutions in yeah. ev uh, like you have your Xiaomi's and and Vivo's, where sure you have an apple who does everything yeah. we also have the Intel Android model, right. where you have horizontals, where you have, let's say, an, a product company building a product, and you have multiple horizontals. Yeah, yeah. You have a semiconductor horizontal, you have an OS horizontal, you have a distribution horizontal. Yeah. And I think that's what will happen with EVs as well. Yeah, there'll, there'll be people who will be making these subsections. Yeah. Like spare part industry will evolve. Yeah. yeah. Mm, got it. Now let's come to your next avatar, mm. which is which is what 20, 20? 20. 20, 20. You left Aether and then you started your own venture. Mm. Talk about that, you know, change. Why did you leave? First of all, you were doing well. The company was doing well, I presume. You were one of the founding champions out there. What made this shift? I was bored. I think uh, Okay. I think the vehicle problem was solved. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of pro products ready to be launched even then. Yeah. We had this large team who was uh -huh. very good at designing, developing, sure. pushing out products. Sure. Aether was now at a classic manufacturing ramp up and yeah. distribution ramp up phase, okay. Okay. which I wasn't entirely looking at. In parallel, I think there was this big wake up call in around 2019, mm -hmm. where every OEM suddenly said, oh, mujhe bhi electric karna hai. Mm. Right? This was fame, 2018 happened, 2019 everyone woke up. Yeah, yeah. And everyone was just running around to find technology in India. Because huh. by then ev everyone had realized mm. You can't import technology for mm. India. Like you can't bring it from China or Europe. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and we were one of the few companies that have proven mm. by then enough years in the field mm. of customer vehicles and product quality. So a lot of them started coming to Aether actually and said, "Hey, why don't you give us your batteries? Okay. We'll build products on top of it." Okay. Interesting. That was an, that was interesting for me. That was exciting mm. uh, to see if we can. Aether was phase one, mm. which was to get. To get people to believe EVs can, are better, mm. and in some sense, the top five percent top-down approach. Mm. Phase two, to me personally, is how do you get all of India to go electric today? Mm. And if I look at it from a personal bandwidth point of view, I can't actually go build products in every category, yeah. like from tractors to buses. Yeah, right? and enough companies now doing a great job of it. Correct. So I don't think there's a need to reinnovate that. Yeah. But the one problem we thought we could solve for mm. is solve for the energy problem. Okay. We can build an energy platform. Okay. Then multiple OEMs can use that technology, build products that. Mm -hmm. next level and the problem statement was very clear to us which is of course people wanted batteries mm -hmm. but we didn't just want to give the battery that people were asking for okay we thought that was actually the wrong spec okay right so we actually took a step back and said there are two three problems first obviously evs took too long to charge yeah second batteries didn't last long enough right and then charging station everyone set up charging station and lost money because mm -hmm. i would charge two vehicles a day mm -hmm. the answer to everything was rapid charging mm -hmm. right what if we said we could just charge a vehicle in 10 minutes 15 mm -hmm. minutes 
Okay. Right. Then that just solved everything. Your biggest adoption hurdle today yeah. is uh, is range anxiety. Yeah. But it's actually not range anxiety. It's actually charging anxiety. Mm. Right? What we realize, we need to give people rapid charging. They don't care about uh, how much. You don't know how many kilometers your your uh, petrol vehicle gives you. Yeah. Because you just know you can always find. Yeah, you can find a pump and then you can charge it. it, right? So as we realized, this then in, we can't just keep giving larger batteries huh. and uh, making the vehicle heavier. And really? no matter even if you go to one kilometer range vehicle, there'll yeah. still be range anxiety. Because mm. one day you'll want to do two fifty kilometers, mm. right? So we realized the best way to solve for this is rapid charging, just okay. like ultra fast freedom flexibility. Mm. Um, and that that's why exponent. Yeah. Wow. I mean, at that point in time, you could also have built a scooter mm. because Aether was a premium, mm. you know, range scooter. Mm, mm, mm. You have built their scooter uh, and their battery, mm. right? So, so you could have had built a scooter, you could have built a truck, you could have built a car, but you ended up building a fast charging solution, mm. right? That trigger must have been big because I have not seen a lot of fast charging solutions around us, right? So, so as a founder, what goes in is what I want to kind of double click more, right? Is it, what, what is that deep inherent, you know, cause that you felt that nothing else, only this? Was, was it your, your capability mm. that I can do this best? Mm. Or was it the market need? Mm. Or was it just an intuition? What was it? I think it's a combination of all three, I think. It's hard to uh, structure that, but uh, I think Aether gave, you, gave us a good vantage point to know all the problems in the yeah. industry. Yeah. And then there's a strong intuition that, hey, I think we could make 15 minute charging work. Like it took us eight months after we started the company to make 15 minute charging work. Eight months? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And 15 I, minute. Yeah. And honestly, 15 minute charging is still not done anywhere else in the world on LFT. So we're the fastest charging tech. This is big. So we were actually a bunch of guys sitting in Bangalore saying we will build the world's fastest charging technology. Yeah. So it was it was very so there was no benchmark. There was no like yeah. there were a bunch of PhD papers okay. talking about it at a okay. science level, okay. but no one had actually built the product or tech. So so it was obviously a strong intuition that we could do it. Mm. But that's not the reason to do it. The reason to do it was obviously the market and the opportunity upside. Mm. Right? Uh, we focus a lot on that. Mm. Uh, I, I think this is important. Like most people get carried away with the fact that Omoje oh, technology aata hai. So mm. I should do it. Mm. I think that's important to know your capability there. Mm. Uh, because at the end of the day, your technology capability is not just founder based. Mm. Your technology capability is like a marathon, it's like a culture. Yeah. Like actually you'll hire hundreds of engineers, mm. build a culture of product development. So mm. actually a founder's technology capability is actually, I think fairly, um, very limited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Uh, I think it's actually the, the, the insight on uh, the context on market opportunity and how yeah. you chase yeah. that, right? Yeah. And for us, the problems are very clear. Like everyone has, obviously range anxiety. Like we we went and asked people, mm. if I give you fifty minutes, you will buy. The, obviously, I mean the answer was obvious there. Correct. But, but there were deeper things, right? Um, it was battery sizing and costing that fundamentally mm. changed the game. Mm. Fifty six to sixty percent of your cost was battery. Yeah. Minute I shave off twenty thirty percent yeah. through rapid charging, yeah. huge impact. Yeah. Minute I give you two x three x longer life, yeah. huge impact on financing or residual value. True. Then charging station businesses will mm. just getting get more profitable. Today, today in our charging stations, we charge uh, like twenty to thirty vehicles a day. Yeah, that's big. So Otherwise, the same, most of the charging stations are just charging stations for the namesake. Yeah, there are no cars or no, no bikes getting charged. Exactly. Yet. But you guys have traction because you built for a solution. Yeah. And because of fifteen minute charging on the same piece of land, we're able to charge a lot more vehicles. Mm. Right, and that's wow. it's like a factory, right? Okay. So more throughput, lower cost. So yeah. we're actually able to deliver energy at a lower cost, yeah, at faster rate. Um, so it's sort of a win-win. The end user is super happy. Mm. He uh, he she gets a vehicle, smaller battery, lower cost, longer life, faster charging, unlimited freedom, flexibility. Yeah. OEMs are happy because they obviously want someone who's able to build the tech but also set up the network. Mm. Uh, right, it's sort of a two-sided problem. Yeah, and obviously charge point operators um, start making money. Sure. Um, so, so we realized there was this one thing, if you cracked, mm. the upside is hu well, exponential. Mm. Pun intended, exponential. For everyone <laughs> in the industry. And it was like this classic yeah, flywheel. As founders, nice. you get excited with flywheels, right? Yeah. So we said, oh, take a flywheel. Banate. Very <laughs> nice. No, that's very interesting, yeah. Uh, but, but tell me, you know, these batteries, I want to just again deconstruct the EV battery, mm. right? So 
you talked about LFP, mm. which is, you know, maybe you can explain. LFP, NMC, sodium, aluminium, hydrogen, so many things, right? Why did you pick one? And maybe if you can, since you are an expert and you are the tech uh, guy, can you explain these technologies and how are they evolving? Okay, so actually at Exponent, we are cell agnostic. So we're not okay. stuck to one particular cell. Okay. And that's the USP of Exponent. Wow. Is, uh, we're a cell agnostic energy management company. Really? Yeah. So we have you can do NMC also? Yeah, yeah. We already do NMC. You already do NMC and LFP? LFP. We have a sodium ion. Cell. Sodium ion also? Okay. What's commercially available is LFP. So yeah. that's the only thing we can actually give you out of our production line right. today. Right. Uh, but from a technology perspective, we are compatible with any cell. Really? Yeah. So, okay. so on one end, we have the grid. Yeah. Which is the wall, and the other end we have cells. Yeah. Uh, cells can keep changing. We see our job as sort of building a transaction platform, which is mm. chargers, BMS, thermal management system, connector, mm. software. Mm. Right? So that's what we built. And the cell, so cell is uh, sort of a can with, with chemicals. It's fairly dumb. Correct. Right. Um, yeah. So it can be sodium ion today, it can be LFP yeah. tomorrow, aluminium ion day after. Doesn't matter. Wow. Right. The fundamentals of a cell is voltage, current, temperature. Mm. Uh, so as long as you understand that. You're able to sense that, you have mm. intelligence to know what to do with that, mm. and you have the right sort of uh, electronics yeah. to react to that, you nice. can actually charge any cell. Wow, so what you do essentially is you play with this, you know, electric current voltage quite a lot and optimize their behavior. Just explain a little bit more that why is it that you are only able to do the world's first 15 minute charging while the others are not yet there. Uh, what's the secret sauce? Obviously, I don't want you to share the secret sauce, but, <laughs> but whatever that you can share, I'm sure, which is what you can, just share that, you know? What did you crack? And, yeah. and, and why is it not so replicable? So, without getting too boring about the tech, uh, I just think there's yeah. two aspects. One is something called lithium plating that happens, and of course, a lot of heat that gets generated mm -hmm. while rapid charging. So you have to attack both. Yeah. The, the, everyone talks about heat, yeah. but that's more like the symptom. Like if you get sick, you will have higher temperature. Yeah. Right. So you can uh, cool you down, uh, but the issue, but you have a some other correct. issue which virus. is a virus, yeah. which is the real problem, right? Yeah. So same way, everyone talks about cooling. Yeah. It's actually the aftermath. Right, the core cost is actually what's happening inside a cell, and yeah. that's where our approach is very different. Okay. Of course, cooling karna hai, that's okay. non negotiable, right? But uh, so everyone else looks at a cell as a cell and lets a cell decide what to do. Like, yeah. you depend on material science of the cell, yeah, you depend on the cell manufacturer telling you what to do. Yeah, what we quickly realize is a cell is a scan with chemicals, yeah, you can make it behave the way you want it to, okay. right? Um, Without and, getting into it. Because you don't make sense. Yeah, without getting into it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot you can do. Mm -hmm. Like, everything in life has gotten smarter, right? I mean, mm -hmm. everything's got sensors and software telling us how to be more efficient. Yeah. Cells, but no one's done that for cells, mm -hmm. right? So we just realized, if I can sense a cell, voltage, current, temperature, mm -hmm. and if I see it behaving differently, mm -hmm. it's like an ECG of sorts. You know when it's stressed, when it's exactly. not. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's like wearing that uh, smartwatch, which is telling you everything about it, and then l let it know when you want to sleep or getting charged or getting you know cooled or whatever. Exactly. So what do you realize when you're stressing a cell out? Yeah. It needs breaks. It's like you're a football coach. A battery has hundred cells. You're like a football coach for hundred of them. Yeah. You need to, like push them, take a break, like make them balance mm -hmm. out. So it's like it's like a full time job. Lovely. Uh, so which means you need active management systems on yeah. the battery all the time. So we're in the job of that. Wow, wow. And then that's that's the secret sauce. Yeah. Secret yeah. Sauce. So, so I think a big play in your work is the BMS. I can't say one thing. Oh, really? A BMS is a secret sauce, mm. but that's like the consultant, right? Mm. It knows what to do. Mm. Uh, but sometimes actually doing something matters more. Right? Mm. It's where our battery thermal management system, our charging station is actually being out there. Mm. There's an entire software stack on top that allows you to find a charge. All of that matters to ensure that the end user gets that. If that person turns up, he gets a magical. 15 minute charging experience every time. So. Wow. wow. I wish you can do that for humans. <laughs> Not charge for sales. <laughs> to charge people up. <laughs> Maybe that's a different because industry. It sounds so good, man. I felt that I was a cell and then you were just rebalancing me every day. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. But so nice yeah, and so interesting. I'm, I'm really loving this conversation because for me also, it's a little, you know, getting into the EV zone, right? Uh, nice. Uh, so, so, but, but I realize that you do it for three wheelers right now. Mm. Not two wheelers, not four wheelers yet. Uh, why is that? And whether you can do that for every aspect of the game, uh, and what's so restrictive 
what's not so restrictive just let us know of that we can do it for any category fundamentally okay. but why we chose commercial vehicles yeah uh, is because uh, the 10 percent vehicles to 70 percent energy like i said so highly concentrated energy use yeah. so right from three wheelers to um, like uh, a bus we're doing a bus this year wow. right uh, now why not two wheelers because i think there's a lot of noise factor there yeah um, there very very few people are building two wheelers for delivery mm, that's true right that's uh, why i said that you could have done that much yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but the no one will buy it <laughs> i'm there you'll buy it yeah. uh, so so that's why this 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 suddenly uh, you know what two wheelers is a aspect of removal batteries maybe yeah. the swap yeah. uh, there are a lot of other aspects i still believe rapid charging wins every yeah. time uh, but there are possibly other options to compete with correct you're right in a way in, I, i i get what you're saying yeah in three wheelers it's a 100 kg batteries bam mm-hmm. right to start with a bus is a two and a half done correct battery so like no one's even trying to swap it but people are but it's not mm-hmm. going to work mm-hmm. uh, which means rapid charging is almost like an it's like an open arena to flex mm-hmm. Um, okay. And also from an energy consumption point of view, like a three wheeler has like ten x more energy consumption than like a two wheeler. Yeah, that's right. Right. So when you look at charging station economics, mm-hmm. it's just easier to build out mm-hmm. starting from a three wheeler mm-hmm. upwards. Makes sense. Yeah. That's where the money is. <laughs> a little <Yeah>. bit. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so how many three wheelers now, and how many pumps now, uh, and uh, what's the utilization? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we got a thousand plus vehicles on road. Thousand plus vehicles, yeah. which are with exponent battery. Yeah, because yeah. you make your own battery you can't just pick any one's battery and no no so yeah. so so all our bms all our systems are housed inside a ba- inside product a product yeah. it's called the e pack yeah which is uh, integrated with oems yeah. uh, got a bunch of oem integrations there mm-hmm. and you know we have 1000 plus vehicles wow. um, we got 60 plus charging stations on road um, nice. uh, like in bangalore for example we have 600 plus vehicles and 30 35 charging stations 30 35 charging, charging stations. stations how many cng pumps are there in bangalore So only 60 CNG pumps in Bangalore. 60 CNG yeah. pumps. So you're already half. You're half of them. We'll, we'll get to 100. Nice. CNG pump costs like two crores a sera. Our charger costs like a couple of lakhs. So it's, it's like. That's it. Yeah. A couple of lakhs. Five lakhs. Yeah. Five lakhs. Yeah. Five lakhs. To build the charger or set it up. Uh, to set it up. Okay. Yeah. And building one. Uh, including all of that. All of that. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Yeah. And then it's. I think it's a very small. This kind of a space that you yeah. set it up. Right. Fifty square feet of land. Yeah. Fifty square feet of land. And 50 square feet yeah. and have you franchised it out already or we have uh, so one of the things we proved is that charging stations can make money yeah if you charge like at least 10 10 12 vehicles a day i think that's yeah. a tipping point 10 15 yeah. vehicles a day you do it's a yeah. good business yeah um, so once we are able to prove that out yeah. um, we are enough franchises like almost 70% of the charging stations in bangalore today are franchise owned for us 70% are franchise owned for us and and what's uh, so so it's it's a utilization play right so so Ten vehicles getting charged, or twelve vehicles getting mm. charged every day. Um, how's the math like for for a user? Mm. If I'm going to your fast charging mm. station versus I'm going to a slow charging, mm. which is happening at my home, mm. uh, same size of battery mm. or the battery size is also different. Just tell me a little bit that the capex, mm. the upfront capex on the battery, mm. is going to be higher or the same, mm. and the charging time obviously is much lower. But the cost of charging is going to be the same or higher. So firstly, the cost, the capex could actually be lower on the battery because we put on a smaller battery, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. one of your biggest cost drivers we're changing, especially now fast charging fast. So so you don't need a 150 kilometer battery on day one. You exactly. start with an 80, so that you can charge it twice. Yeah, day. and people don't complain. People don't complain. Yeah. As long as you have a network. Mm-hmm. Uh, network is important. Network is important, right? Uh, but. If you have the network, people absolutely don't mind mm-hmm. a lower range. Mm-hmm. Well, that how much lows subject to every city, but yeah. maybe in Bangalore, six to eight is good enough. Delhi, eighty right. to hundred is good enough. Right. Uh, but it's far lesser than what a fixed load charging battery need, needs to sure. give you. Sure. Uh, second, it's also the and with fame going away, this cost impact will really start seeing through because today, yeah. fame is per kilowatt hour. Yeah. Right. So despite that, we actually showcase some cost advantages. Mm. But with fame going away, you'll really see those advantages come through. Mm-hmm. Uh, second is also the. Number of cycles that mm-hmm. this battery is lasting. So, what's your per kilometer per cycle cost? Mm-hmm. So, we give a three thousand cycle warranty even with the rapid charging. Three thousand cycles. Yes. Yeah. What what cell is this? This is a normal LFP. Normal LFP cell. You guys don't make cell. Make we cell. don't make cells. We sell agnostic. You sell agnostic. Yeah. Okay. And these are LFP cells essentially, mostly at yeah. the moment, right? That that you guys are working on. Standard LFP cells. 
we even i have not heard of anything going beyond 15 mm. cycles to be very frank yeah so today the way because like i said uh, no one's taking active management on the cell right yeah. so today you you do ccv which is constant current constant voltage yeah, charging yeah. you just you charge a cell and you're putting fixed voltage fixed current and you let the cell decide how to feed itself right, right. something right. which is very limiting so because of our approach uh-huh. actually a cell has 5000 cycles of life if is you it? if you really know how to extract it really yeah mm-hmm. and and yes. some people have Uh-huh. with slow charging people have extracted 4000 5000 cycles okay. with with proper management okay. we're just doing that with rapid charging which makes it slightly harder so wow. we're now giving a three, almost a 2x 3x warranty okay. compared to the industry standard okay. so our financing terms is of 5 years for example nice. so so the which means your emi etc go down yeah. the residual value goes we're now planning on on, on a buyback model which allows you wow. we we're putting our money where our mouth is yeah and uh, so your cost of vehicle per kilometer is far lower than yeah. any other vehicle yeah the cost of charging it depends on what you're comparing it to sure if you're charging at home mm. it's always the cheapest Correct. so you should go for it so we don't stop you from charging at home we not we not like we actually have multiple ports in the vehicle so you can sure. charge at home you oh can. you can do a slow charging also at home yeah yeah we have, we, we believe in full freedom flexibility then you say you want to charge at home charge at home you want to charge on other networks charge on other network we let you charge in one hour nice. on a gpt network okay but even the 15 minute charging you come yeah. to our network uh, but we are actually cheaper uh then most charging solutions because if you don't have land at yeah. your home yeah um correct which most people don't right. then you're actually paying for parking mm. and charging which means roughly you're paying 24 rupees a unit mm. of electricity mm. Mm. how we do the math uh, we we charge you 14 to 16 rupees a unit not bad not bad for really fast charging and, and i think that's where there's a dichotomy happening i think people will charge at home yeah if you have the space it is the lowest cost obviously most efficient way to charge correct or people will do public charging mm. in sub 10 minutes or swap mm. i think one hour fast charging is sort of an orphan child mm. it's like e-commerce right either people people say give it to me in 2 3 days i don't care yeah. or give it to me in 10 minutes 10 now. minutes yeah same day delivery is sort of nice pointless today nice that's true it's like neither there nor there yeah, yeah so imagine really. going to a public location yeah. and waiting for an hour mm. it's actually ridiculously painful i don't think that's ever scalable beyond highways Exactly. Yeah. So your passenger car on the highway is you taking your force. I mean, you don't have time in our current lifestyles, and you are thinking that someone will wait in the daytime for yeah. an hour to charge your yeah. vehicle. Sorry, not yeah. happening. Yeah, and it's not only a time thing. I think it's just annoying. Correct. Right. Correct. And the economics also make it worse. Yeah. Actually, doing public one hour charging is yeah. actually more expensive than public fifteen minute charge. So, <laughs> right. So yeah, we just realize. Yeah. So we just realize it's a very two dichotomy of the world that will happen, right. and uh, we're playing for one of that. Wow. which which is compatible with other so we like we want to ensure you can still charge at home mm. but tell me again uh, so so there are a lot of companies which are building swapping and their entire thesis is swapping mm. uh, they are scaling well and uh, you know uh, you are doing a pure very different solution which is mm. fast charging mm. right uh, i'm sure both will have their use cases mm. but what's your thesis why will one win over the other if at all see i know they rapid charging the ultimate solution Uh, because it's like a energy supply chain let's say i have a swap station yeah let's say i have two three vehicles come in and out every hour right and i think you definitely resonate with this problem yeah um it's sure swap is quick for the first couple of people yeah but uh, it's yeah. quickly run out of batteries yeah fresh batteries yeah uh, which means if you have more vehicles throughput correct you need more energy transfer yeah, no you'll need to charge them fast and give it yeah exactly correct. so I'll actually scale this up. You'll yeah. quickly realize, or oh, then I need a rapid charge for swap battery. No, but same thing will happen at the rapid charge also, right? Even if it's 15 minutes, mm. you set up two pumps, three pumps at one point in time. If five vehicles come in, two will have to wait. Even sure. if it's a wait for 15 minutes, right? So, sure. so the problem is same at the swap station also. The first few mm. will get a quick, mm. um, you know, swap battery, but then the others will have to wait for 15, 20 minutes, right? The same mm. can happen. Not 15, 20 minutes, right? It'll be. it'll be a couple of hours no but one station has about let's say 12 15 batteries and sure. saying from from that lens then you're increasing the capex so that's yeah. the second point yeah. you know the only way to solve for this either you rapid charge which yeah. is the low capex high tech approach yeah. or you increase number of batteries in float which is the high capex approach right and and so which is put more batteries in the ecosystem yeah. so today if you have 100 vehicles maybe in 140 batteries 160 batteries yeah. maybe with 100 vehicles you, you might need 200 batteries with scale mm. Mm. Uh, i i know i'm right now sort of touching on no, no, murky no, no, territories no. with swap here no, because no, no, no. <laughs> because see I, neither i am a swapping company nor i am a charging company mm. i am a fleet company mm. i am agnostic to the fraternity which grows mm. to the battery type which grows to the vehicle type which grows mm. so i don't have a problem right so today we are working a lot with swap mm. because we are two wheelers mm. 
we 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 are working with you now because we we uh, now went to three windows mm. but i think i'd love to know since you are building for mm. charging which mm. is fast charge and you know that swapping exists mm. coexist mm. within the three wheel of frame mm. of mind mm. right one versus other if there is a use case what would that be according to you i'm sure you would you know talk about fast charging to be the one <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I'm going to have a biased view here, but I think fundamentally, uh, our competition we see is far more on um, in three wheeler space. We see competition from other companies providing larger batteries. Yeah, Fame is a bigger competition for us in yeah. three wheelers than, like, say, than why, why, why Fame? Because Fame is a space for larger batteries. Oh, right. Yeah. So all our so it's sort of an inefficient freebie sort of model, right? But but in your battery also, Fame is not. There. But you get lesser Fame because oh. it's it's a smaller battery, right? Oh, so today, Fame and devices are the wrong things mm. a little bit. Mm. Right? Um, Are you the one who's trying to? No, no, I, I have nothing to do with it. Right? I don't think I have that much <laughs> capability to move, move this industry. But yeah. uh, uh, no, no, like uh, huh. so, I, we we fundamentally haven't seen too yeah. much of a. Uh, see, for example, like we, we we can give you an eight to ten kilowatt battery pack, mm. charging fifteen minutes. Mm. Swap can go in between like four and a half to six. Mm. Uh, so. I think it sort of it definitely works. I think the f- swapless financing is a very powerful solution for two wheelers, mm. uh, e-rickshaws. Yeah, um, yeah. We sort of start seeing it taper off for three wheelers. So mm. for, and today we are happy to work with swap companies. We're actually exploring how we can provide rapid charging through so the batteries. swap batteries. Yeah. Also. yeah, actually, it can coexist, right? It can coexist yeah, because they've got a fan- fantastic network set up. They've mm. got great financing solutions. Mm. Uh, things that we are not uh, necessarily into ourselves. So. Mm. So in a way, you're saying that both can coexist depending on the use case or the requirement of the consumer. <laughs> sure. I think, that's, I think I think there's an I'll get full kit, I'll get full kit next, and then we'll talk about it. Maybe possibly the three of us together. Oh yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Let's do that. But uh, now tell me, you know, you seem to be a hardcore techie man, mm. right? ID withdrawals, building cars, building scooters, building batteries. Mm. And now building a business, mm. is it easy for a techie mm. like you mm. to build a business? And you are the co-founder and CEO. Mm. You have co-founders. Mm-hmm. Yes. How many? We have we are a founding team of uh, three to four members. Three four. Okay. Um, all of these guys who are founding partners, co-founders. Nice, nice, nice. So, so tell me how this transition of being an entrepreneur mm. from a techie mindset. Mm. How did you evolve into it, or was it always there? What what takes you back? What would you attribute the most of being not a techie but an entrepreneur? What would you attribute? See, I don't see it too differently. Is it? Uh, end of the day, I think it's problem solving. Mm. Right? I think if you bring it down, of, of course, there are aspects of selling, mm. etc., which I think are skill sets you learn. Mm. Um, I mean, this is the most valuable companies in the world are built by hardcore techies who figured out everything else mm. um, I don't think I'm the best engineer like I'm not the deepest engineer sure. uh, I've never been mm. uh, so I know how to find the best engineers mm. I think I still I'm, I'm a very good product person right. and I think so right. you, you you get I think you always live 80-20 today in mm. startups it's 151 right like mm. you don't have time to do 20 things so you mm. find one thing gives you 50% of time. Mm. so I think that that framework you can apply mm. very quickly to building businesses mm. um like for example, there are businesses that are probably be really bad at building, like a finance business, maybe, or like, or, mm. or, or or a fleet business, because um, uh, because it has zero tech mm. leverage, mm. right? Uh, but we are building a hardcore tech business, so mm. being a tech person um, is the biggest differentiator. Everything else, I think, you get support along the way. You can always build a finance team. Mm. Correct. You can always build a manufacturing team. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, having said that. Uh, been part of the founding journey at Ather once, so made a few mistakes there, got a little smarter. Mm. Uh, and I think the hardest bit in this in this sort of industry of ours is building ta- building a talent pool. Yeah. Uh, to generate, uh, we are more of a product led technology f- first company, which right. means we got to get the product right, the technology right. Yeah. Everything else sort of mm. gets built up on top of that. So it's a it's a different type of company. But yeah, there are challenges like when I see companies that. I think the first year when I started this, like my biggest learning curve was how to sell. Like I was, mm. I was so, I was like this person who was so dry and to the point on like this is the logic, this is the right way to do it. Like and then you know you just get, I think you just get uh, it's a big growth curve on how do you get better at mm. sell, 
sending that message across yeah uh, yeah i think yeah i because when i have spoken to you like sorry we can't do two wheelers <laughs> 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 while if i would be in your place i would say yeah yeah we're coming soon we're there you know that, that's that's how you know a tech product guy as a ceo versus maybe a selling guy as a ceo <laughs> but i think to to each its so yeah the advantages are but we have a three wheeler right? i know and we are we are doing work together yeah. would you want to talk a little bit about the stats on the three wheelers that are being deployed with exponent with zip i think there's some success that i've seen and mm. team has talked about that would you want to talk about a certain nuance of it which is interesting yeah so i think we got we got 50 plus vehicles in bangalore yeah. with zip and uh, i think most of them are on on demand logistics yeah. uh, which has been a bigger success for us um, because let's say you have base logistics mm-hmm. there are always different solutions yes it comes on demand logistics that's where we hands down win the yeah. fact that we have 50 minute charging or network around right uh, so a lot of interesting stuff right uh, like the vehicles on zip on average 150 km a day 150 average and these are three wheelers doing three wheelers 150 km on cargo yeah correct right which is crazy yeah. uh, and they're doing 200 plus kilometers multiple days it's not a one off mm-hmm. it's it's uh, okay. almost four out of 30 days they do 200 plus kilometers correct okay. 10 out of 30 days they do about 130 kilometers wow right um wow. i think i think anecdotally we know some of some of these guys are running like 5000 plus rupees a day yeah. uh, by think, doing yeah. by doing like 200 plus kilometers uh, so the drivers seem to be really happy and yeah. and the other thing was we realized there's no fixed logistics right so a vehicle on average we are like let's say we have 30 e pumps in bangalore hmm. a vehicle on average is using almost um 15 15 different e pumps in a hmm. month oh So they are all across yeah, all the across city, the place. agnostic to one station, mm. right? Which is mostly what again happens on swap that you are stuck to one station. But it's nice that they are moving around. And I think one of the guys did about two seventy kilometers. Yeah, that was that was the highest. Yeah, the guy who did two seventy kilometers. Yeah. But but more yeah more than the outlier. I think the average yeah average repeat highest. performance was like was very uh, was very very impressive. Yeah. I think I think that's one of the highest averages we've seen. Wow. And. Uh, Yeah, we we've seen people go from airport on the north to Hoosu in south in like in a single day. Yeah. 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 So nice. Nice. Yeah. So so that's that's very interesting that people are doing 270 kilometers on a three wheeler which is electric. So yeah. guys, EV is here now. Yeah. Yeah, EV's been that. here. 270 kilometers yeah day. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Range anxiety has gone. Yeah. Correct. Nice. So now again tell me um you know while building the business what are the key ingredients mm. that you have mm. looked for? right um, uh, as a ceo and founder what are your biggest fears or responsibilities right now uh, and how have you pivoted yourself towards them from an ether to you know building exponent because a lot of people why i'm saying that also because a lot of people would quit jobs mm. and build a business mm. or quit a startup mm. and build a business mm. so how do they evolve into it I think uh, firstly I think your reason to start the company has to be absolutely clear mm. it has to be pure uh, I've I've seen many people say oh you're your own boss so you're starting your company your, your own boss that's mm. that's the most exciting thing I'm like no you're no one's like you could be the president of the USA and you have a boss right like um, especially being a founder is not being a boss absolutely you are actually the biggest slave in the early days <laughs> because you have to look up to every employee ki bhai aaj kaam karenge saath mein yeah. aaj to mere vision ko saath mein jee raha hai na yeah, yeah. so you can't say that you're the boss yeah. boss building a team it fucking you you can shit in your pants yeah. you know people don't join you how can you be a boss yeah. boss wo bolta hai ki le paise aa jao bhai paise nahi hai <laughs> yeah this <laughs> mere vision ke saath mere chal right that's the, what so that's most ridiculous reason yeah. right like the people okay. uh, so i think get your reason yeah. right yeah. Uh, why you build. i think either you're obsessed by the problem yeah uh, i think or you're obsessed uh, by some opportunity that you're looking at yeah. i think that's the right reason yeah you're obsessed by a world view mm. uh, that doesn't exist today mm. so i think that's those are my reasons right i mean i love to build i love to build a world view that doesn't exist um and uh, so i think that that's more sustainable those are those are more sustainable because like i think a startup journey is just like long mm. you need sustainable reasons yeah. um to keep you going uh, true power true energy mm. um yeah I, i think for me um starting exponent the role shifted a little bit from pure product to of course a lot more sales a lot more business development we were like doing a lot more b2b stuff mm. um raising capital became my primary responsibility 
uh, which are all new things. Um, so I think it's just a very, uh, very aware of that I am the only person responsible for some of these things. Uh, mm-hmm. Been lucky enough to have a founding team mm-hmm. that has taken a lot of technology and ops responsibility away from me. So then I've just been able to, uh, I do that. That's more my fun days, like mm-hmm. two out of maybe a day a week, I'm able to have fun yeah. focusing on that. But yeah. remaining five, day, five, five days a week, it's... Yeah. It's working on some of these things, which, which over time I've, I think I've learned to love. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And and I think uh, you've raised some tons of capital, by the way, for your business. I must say that, and congratulations. Oh, wait, on that. I mean, I, mean, I, yeah. I think I saw one of your last videos, which was so well done. You know, yeah. all the investors talking about in that video. <laughs> and that was very lovely. You Thank know, you. a very very nice way of, you know, saying that hey, we we just raised around, but hey, this is how we did. Right? Thank you. I like it. Uh, I think a lot of um, you know new companies should follow that trend, but. Uh, but tell me, you know, raising funds for an EV company, mm. which is also trying to do something which does not exist. Mm. How easy or tough was it for you? I think it's like a marathon. Mm. Um, what we realize in our business mm. is you can't actually uh, like get out one day and say, I'm going to do and three months it's done. It, it doesn't work because there's so many aspects of our business that is very unknown. Yeah, uh, It requires a lot of like compared to like if SaaS is the most easiest thing to invest in like mm. I think EVs in general are far harder like you've probably experienced a lot of this I mean you've got assets you've got to manage that it's okay. like um, and then also when you're building tech on and manufacturing on top of this it mm. becomes even more unknown so yeah. then it becomes uh, so so I mean for example I've got mad respect for the way you guys have scaled up mm. and like no just thanks, executed yeah. at yeah. so much speed mm. uh, so those are things we're learning is how do you bring in the speed and hustle of a startup mm. to a technology mm. company, which otherwise is looked at very true, uh, slow yeah. and boring, right? Yeah. And no one wants to invest in slow and boring. It might be cool. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's why every year, for example, we think thought this through like an engineer in a sense, like we've looked at de-risking. We said, okay, every year, ek cheese code de risk Like mm. first year was just tech, second year was product, third year was PMF, fourth year was scale and ops. Yeah. And that was a story. I said, this is all we'll do every wow. year. This what you're funding, mm. and others will de-risk this, wow. right? So let's look at the business as a product, and <laughs> then how do you de-risk? How do you validate? How do you test? Love how do you iterate? It. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think you get investors who get that, and mm. you get investors who don't get that, and that's okay. Mm. I think that's a good uh, filter. Like if they don't get that, then you can't handle investors who don't get that because yeah. it's like a ten-year marathon. So. Can you talk about your first check? Who wrote it, and how did you find that? The first check was in April 2021, mm-hmm. um, well, actually, Feb 2021 that we signed. Uh, this was uh, uh, three investors with a bunch of angels um, mm-hmm. with Advantage, Your Nest, mm-hmm. 314. Nice. Uh, they all came together and did it around for us. Mm-hmm. And I think they were just funding the team because back then there was nothing. Like In fact, one of the investors came to, to the office and there was nothing. There was a shed and, yeah. and a bunch of people. We had a toilet. That's it. <laughs> and, and <laughs> we bootstrapped the toilet. But uh, well, that, that's about it, right? Wow. So Not uh, even a battery built by that? No. Wow. We didn't have a single cell. Wow. Right? Uh, but we also raised a million. So it was, it was, um, yeah. it was literally average size check. Um, sure. And I, but I, the risk profile was way too high, obviously. But I, they like the team. And I but the vision it. and the team and the thought was something that they resonated with. And before that, how many no's? There weren't too many no's, ironically. Uh-huh. Uh, I think we started racing like around December of mm. 2020. Yeah. We started the company in December 2020. Right. Before we had a right. check. It was, it, I think we were also nice. smart in not asking for... What we said no to is like, hey, don't raise $5 million. Like, right. like we were like, oh, $5 million, like, give us $5 million, we'll build the whole company yeah. like, in, like in one year. Yeah. Uh, which is obviously day zero optimism. Correct. Um, it happens. It yeah. happens. Uh, but I think what we quickly realized is uh, what we think is... And I think as founders, you think this is 100% going to happen. Mm. It, and I think most often does happen. Yeah, it just know. takes a little longer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you just got to... I think then we just realized we have to make this palatable, right? Yeah. You have to like make this correct at like tangible milestones yeah. in between. Correct. And like how do you de risk that? So let's like I think I think we just got like more optimized on our fundraise plan and then we That's very good learning actually. Yeah. You know, it happens for me also. Every time when I say that you know, we'll raise a hundred mil round. Yeah. Then I end up saying, nah, yaar. Zada tha. <laughs> <laughs> let's do a 40, yeah. you know, that, that'll be good for now. Yeah. yeah. And that's what market forces tell you. If you're yeah. not able to hear it, yeah. then you're a foolish guy. Yeah. Yeah. But if you are able to understand, yaar, you're thinking wrong. That's yeah. when you win. Yeah. 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 I think that's, that's a good learning. Yeah. 
Awesome. And what about, you know, what are what do you look at when you hire teams, right? Um, how do you look at building culture, right folks? Because it's very tough again for when you're starting out to get those initial people right. Mm. How do you do that? Well, I, I think that's the biggest time one must spend. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I don't see, I don't see founders as tech people or or sales people, right? I look, I think your bigger job is HR mm. and talent, right? Like, uh, at least in our job is a lot of incubation okay. that happens. Like uh, you, inv- you hire someone and you invest. Like you don't see outcomes from an engineer in our company in a year. Mm. Like you see oh. small milestones yeah. every three, four months. Yeah. So then you got to like hire people you genuinely trust mm. and give them the ability to make mistakes, mm. fail. Mm. And then eventually you will see some output. Awesome. Like business is very different. Like in sales, you're talking weekly, monthly, quarterly targets. So we have this dichotomy of an, of of a side of a business mm. uh, and learning sales right now, mm. uh, which is on the go, always be closing. Mm. And on the other end, you have this very long-term mm. marathonish approach. Yeah. Trying to coexist both is, I think that's our learning curve for this year. Yeah. yeah. Do you like our engineers? No. <laughs> nice. But tell me, I mean, uh, just we, we touched a little bit about this and I want to bring back uh, this debate on the type of batteries which are you know coming along, and you talked about uh, sodium ion also, uh, right? Uh, just just whether hydrogen's gonna prevail or sodium or aluminium. Where your thought process is again? Mm. Where is industry moving towards? So I think the eventual answer will be an ionic cell, okay, of some type. Okay. Either be lithium ion, sodium ion, aluminium ion. Well, that's a very, very base answer, man. I want a very detailed answer from you. Oh, it, okay, it won't be hydrogen for sure. It won't be hydrogen? 100%. It won't be a fuel cell. It won't be hydrogen. Okay. Right? Uh, because Why? Oh, because hydrogen is just ridiculous. Hydrogen is actually ridiculously inefficient. Right? Hydrogen is actually the last dying stand lobby by petrol companies. Oh, okay. Right? Because with uh, EVs, they become irrelevant. Yeah. There's electricity everywhere. Correct. Okay. Distribution is democratized. But with hydrogen, maybe you'll have to go buy a chemical from them every day. Um, so their relevance stays up. Correct. Uh, but hydrogen is so inefficient. You actually use electricity to create hydrogen, then it's to compress it, store it, then you put it in, a, in the vehicle, and then you convert that to electricity again across two oh. steps. Right? Of course, you have fuel cells, yeah. uh, you have turbines, you have hydrogen engines, but just... Um, I think if at all hydrogen works, it might be just go from a hydrogen engine yeah. directly. Yeah. But it's going to be very inefficient. Yeah. Like for one unit of electricity generated, EVs will easily do 6x, 3x to 6x more kilometers mm. per unit of electricity yeah. compared to hydrogen. Mm. Is it? Easily. What do you think of Tesla coming to India? Is it going to be like a tectonic shift in the industry or good, bad? Their charging stations are going to compete with yours or what do you think? See, I think Tesla coming is good Yeah. Uh, because it just makes the competition stiff. Yeah. But I think off late, everyone in the industry is acting like oh, we need Tesla, like India needs Tesla. Yeah. No, actually Tesla needs India, like I think yeah. a little bit more than we like to understand. Um, and India is a different market. I think I think, uh, and and I'm a big Elon Musk fanboy. Yeah. Um, we all are. You are, you, are, you do. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. I I think their entry to India will be far more complicated for other reasons, huh. and not, and not, um, and not the legal or the uh, legislation bit that is sort of working yeah. with on imports and taxes, yeah. etc. Um, like India is genuinely a different market. Mm. Right. So when. China's got a very different market. There is a very premium market out there. True. And there is the other Correct. scooter market out there. They both coexist. India is weirdly somewhere in between. Yeah. They're super value conscious, temperature difference yeah. different. Value conscious different. across the pyramid. Across the pyramid. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so, of course, there is a premium market in India growing yeah. rapidly, yeah. all that. So, mm. there is that. Mm. Uh, but I'm very excited what homegrown brands are doing, like what Tata is putting out, what Mahindra is mm. putting out. Mm. Um, very exciting stuff. Um, yeah. Who is Arun in his personal life? I mean, just give us a sneak peek into that. Where do you, you know, find solace in after all building the startup, right? Mm. Uh, what about your family? Where do you spend time, you know, when you're not building exponent? When, well, you are always, but that those one of one of those few days. 
No, no, I, I, I like to keep my Sundays to myself. It's uh, try to keep it as holy <laughs> as possible. Like in a sense, like not holy make, in which way? Uh, um, uh, make it uh, means of being holy. No, no, make it uh, non-exponent as much as possible. Okay. Sanctity, yeah. yeah, bring it some sanctity, I guess. Uh, but no, no. So Sundays are with with. I'm from fa- Bangalore, so I got a lot of friends from school. Mm. Love spending time with them. Love my beer in Bangalore. So <laughs> these are things that we do. We uh, there's good go karting scene in Bangalore. Spent a lot of time doing that. What what's that? The good go go karting scene in Bangalore. Oh, go karting. Oh, yeah. you, you enjoy that. Yeah, I love I love that. Oh, yeah. It's really fun. Nice. Um, and road trips. We do a lot of road yeah. trips. On bikes or? Um, I used to do a lot more bikes. I think off late become. Uh, age is catching up on the back, so I think I love to. It's easier now, I think, to go yeah. in cars, I, especially now that you got a family. And, yeah. yeah, nice. And and what about um, your you know work life balance? Not just the holidays, but like what do you do during your day, mm. which which brings the calm, if at all, right? Mm. Whether it's uh, you know just just what what makes you think more during the day. As a founder, you need to have that time. I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is is there something that you can talk about on that? Yeah, no, I, I love mental space. Uh, I love taking my mental space. Mm-hmm. Like I've generally designed, I realized over time that sometimes making no decision is also a valid mm-hmm. um, decision, mm-hmm. right? Uh, sometimes late decisions are good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you want to mm-hmm. necessarily. Uh, and sometimes you're too late, uh, but I think like calibrating on that mm-hmm. can be critical. So I, I do. I think I think my biggest piece of advice I keep telling the team is mental space like I feel like so many people just turn up in the morning and they're, they're going at it and I'm mm-hmm. like but like have your time to mm-hmm. just think through what you're doing like like what are you doing today what are you doing for the week yeah. so I love I love spending that time I love my coffee time solo coffee time or solo coffee time yeah solo yeah. coffee time what about workouts or meditations or readings or uh, uh, content watching what, what do yeah you- kind of watching is binge I think content watching is a stupid time but yeah. like, I don't think I, I don't think I, I, I can't uh, have thoughts while I'm watching content yeah, because yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. uh, workout time I think is just more like um, I love working out with, with my trainer and mm. uh, I've been working on lifting last year. Yeah, really? uh, I had a back injury, so last year was a recovery year for my personal. Uh, yeah. uh, it was my personal benchmark to say, okay, let's start squatting mm-hmm. X number of kgs. It was good. It was a good recovery year. Nice. And um, yeah, uh, but like there, you're just having fun in the gym with like people, so I don't think you had time to think. So I like to like set aside a couple of hours, mm, you do. yeah, and just like think through. Get I love some alone time. Wow. wow, it's or, or I love um, like whiteboard sessions based on what the mm. problem is. Sometimes it's like I love sitting up two three hours with people in the room. Yeah, maybe there's some some coffee and some food and just love jamming on. That's true. Yeah, that's a good time. If it's a tech problem or so. Mm. So there are a lot of large players in your segment, right? There's Startup Power, there's GOBP, mm. there is, uh, you know, I think a couple of startups also which are into charging space, Kazam mm. or mm-hmm. Static, mm-hmm. right? And and then there's Exponent, right? So how do you how do you compare yourself, if at all, with this competitive landscape, the large guys versus startups? versus the fast charging bit of exponent, right? How do you position? There's Exicom also, right? Which just went public, right? So where mm-hmm. would you put yourself amongst all this? So there are companies that build batteries, the companies that build chargers, and most times they don't do each other, mm. um, right? Uh, when that, in some sense, is the problem. Mm. Today, someone's building a battery, someone's building a charger, mm. it doesn't understand each other. Mm. So this whole charging problem you spoke about, that's mm. where you have slow charging and yeah. bad battery life. Yeah. With only full stack energy company, with only company that builds batteries plus chargers and mm. the full stack, mm. uh, or maybe Tesla, maybe Ether as well. But like we're the only companies doing that as a platform. Yeah. Uh, so in some sense, our business model is far more similar to Swap because we're mm. talking about battery plus network True. plus vehicle integration. Um, so it's one is to one in some sense to Swap. Yeah. It's different tech. Um, so from that point of view, uh, we we don't see ourselves as like a slow charging. Like a lot of these plays are more like smart plug points, right? Which is okay, doesn't solve the problem. Um, so, or we're not a great infra company. We, in fact, collaborate with other CPOs yeah. um, who invest or co-locate our charges. Mm-hmm. So we're a good pl- way for CPOs to make money. We're not actually competing with them. Right. Um, and um, so we see ourselves as this middle layer, transaction layer, mm-hmm. uh, sort of like Visa for money, we're exponent mm-hmm. for energy. So that's mm-hmm. that's the um, that's the layer we're building. Nice. So I think the last question. I would love to know that in the EV segment. Mm-hmm. Like you've picked up charging, 
someone has picked up building a scooter someone mm. has building a fleet company mm. but there are a lot of youngsters who want to build mm. in this segment mm. and we still are like five years industry i would say mm-hmm. right it's a sunrise industry mm. it'll run for the next 15 years 20 years 30 years what are the few business models uh, or problems that you would like youngsters to address and possibly build businesses out there i think it's opportunity in all, all spaces okay uh But I think the most valuable ideas are the not so obvious ones, mm. which means maybe none of us know about it yet. So <laughs> I think I think just go out there. I think I think your your idea should just get a lot of no's. Mm. That's a good idea. So I think we should. Uh, wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot of no's, man. Yeah, I I can I can feel that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good idea. It's a good. It's a good. <laughs> how, how do you how do you how do you work on the whole balance piece and? Yeah. Because I I I've, I've, I've spoken a few times, but I've yeah. of course seen your social media presence. Yeah. yeah. But you seem like you're traveling all the time. You're working out. You're yeah. doing this podcast. Yeah. You're scaling the company up. Yeah. Uh, you seem to be having fun doing all of this. Ah, uh, I am enjoying. Yeah. So, so what's what's your what's your secret? Yeah. <laughs> you put me on a spot, but I think uh, I think for me it's like that die-hard feeling of getting somewhere. Hmm. which is you know that that gives you enough high right you you want to have a version of yourself which is called as successful at the same time who has obviously not got it so easy right and then you start enjoying that mm. you know when you kind of it's like playing a game you fail every day but then you have that same energy to play it again mm. so i think i find that to be the challenge mm. that i am in that zone whether it's whether it's getting right on the body side or getting right on the podcast game getting right on the business game uh getting right on the fundraising game right so it's like a never feeling settled wo wo maza nahi aayega when when you're settled right i i and yeah. in fact i talk talk this out to a few yeah. people that hey you build a you know 500 crore company you have let's say a 50 crore pad yeah. right what is it next for you maybe 1000 crore 100 crore pack but what else because i don't find that you can sit and chill only in life how will you live a life sitting on a beach all the time yeah no right so it it's the fun of chasing something yeah uh, like we men like to chase mm. and if i do not have anything to chase then i am dead i mm. feel that mm. so i am enjoying the chase Okay. <laughs> that's that's what it is. That's what you know. Every day you wake up. Yeah, कल हारे थे कोई नहीं आज फिर खेलेंगे. Maybe that's. I guess if I guess if you are one of those people who are restless and chasing, then yeah, that's that's going to be the default. Yeah, 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 I think so. Do you, you think ambition and happiness coexist? I think so. You think so? I think so. Ambition of not money actually. No, no, not of money. I, I was thinking. In fact, someone was telling me that hey, you know, you you're now some of your uh ctc is going into any mi and i don't know i even don't know what is going where <laughs> whether it's going somewhere or not i have not, not even seen my bank account for so many days mm. <laughs> because wo nahi hai matlab i think it's it's the fun of building 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 uska ek alag hi maza hai i think mm. that adrenaline is very different mm. and like every conversation you're learning you're enjoying talking to people because something which is intriguing is kind of helping you yeah <laughs> On that note guys this is interesting this was going deeper <laughs> but so good to have you Arun awesome here so yeah, thanks nice. for having so me so nice for for coming over and we love the setup love a lot love the setup thanks so much for having me thanks thanks awesome